uh, to intermediate macroeconomics. Uh, we now dive into the discussion of the, of the substance of the course. Uh, in this uh, segment, we'll have uh, an overview of the key concepts, but also setting the stage for the discussion. Uh, it, given the, the context of uh, the world that we, are, we live in, it, it, it seems fitting to think again quickly about how we came to be where we are now. As you all uh, remember, uh, 2008 uh, 2009 were very challenging years for, for the global economy and for the US. The, the world economy uh, experienced one of the most severe uh, recessions of the century following the, the, the recession in the, in the depression of the, the 1930s. And we also remember that this is a recession that, was, that originated from the financial market. Um, before that, we had, go, we had seen a period of uh, prosperity with high growth rates, both in developed countries, develop, developed countries and developing countries. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, in that context, we have to admit that um, financial, uh, people, uh, the public had become and the policymakers had become a little bit complacent uh, with the, the strong performance of the financial markets where some economists actually had, uh, co had raised concerns about the fact that the financial markets, the financial system was moving much faster than the real system. And uh, the, the recession got, was triggered by the fact that by uh, unsustainable and uh, imprudent lending by the financial markets, especially in the real in the in the in the mortgage in the, mod in the, in the mortgage sector, where uh, uh, through creative uh, financial en engineering, new products were, were 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 put on the market, which packaged several types of assets some of which now we know were toxic. At the same time, there was a process of, of uh, loan pushing uh, on consumers who otherwise would not have, uh, have qualified for mortgage, le mortgage loans, who nevertheless received, um, uh, were approved for lending, only to, to find themselves uh, in, in, in tough situations, unable to pay to service the loans when they, their job prospects uh, got, uh, uh, were Compromise. This reminds us uh, back in the 70s, where during uh, the, the, the 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 oil price booms, where uh, pr oil producers were had were collecting large volumes of uh, export revenue, uh, lot, lots of foreign exchange um, in uh, reserves in, in those in those in those countries who who needed to use those reserves. So banks were willing to lend because there was a lot, lot of, lots of money to lend. And these loans were pushed on, on, on countries, especially developing countries, only to find themselves at, in, at the, in the early 80s in trouble paying back the debt. And we, we faced um, the debt crisis of the 80s, which was devastating for, for, uh, for, for developing countries. So what we have now also is a process where, is a situation where too much and too easy credit uh, uh, drove uh, the, the financial system into, into a crisis. But in this particular situation, the crisis and the problems did not remain confined in the financial system. It became, in fact, an economic, an economic uh, crisis. And it's important, it's interesting to understand how do we go from a financial crisis to an economic crisis. The key channels of transmissions were trade, as financial institutions be have trouble, their balance sheets uh, uh, become weaker, they were, they were unable to sustain the, low, the, the lines of credit for imports and exports. So trade suffered dramatically. At the same time, as consumers were becoming, uh, 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 were falling into debt crisis, consumption declined. And as consumption declined in, in, the, in, in the advanced economies, trade uh, exports for developing countries and emerging countries de declined, and that slowed down growth also in developing countries. So you have a process of transmission of both uh, the shocks from the financial system to the real sector, but also a process of transmission from the center of the origin of the crisis, developed countries, the US, the Europe, to developing countries, Africa, and, uh, and uh, Latin America and emerging economies. So basically you have a phenomenon where a financial crisis 
generate an economic crisis. You have a, a, a situation where a crisis in the U.S. and developed countries generate crisis in um, in developing countries. So we 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 observed basically three rounds of effects. The first round was uh, limited to financial system, where in in many countries in in the U.S. you, you saw the collapse of the big. Um, uh, big, big institutions, but also in, in, in developing countries and emerging countries, they were affected originally, initially in the financial system where you had an, a, severe, a large outflow of capital, of finance from developing countries, from, uh, from uh, South Africa, from Egypt, from Nigeria, from uh, Asian countries, where investors from, East, from Europe and the US were re repatriating revenue to make up for the losses uh, here at home. So that's the first round effect which, w which was limited to the financial markets where you have major decline in stock, in, in stock value, in stock indexes in all markets. But the second round then it was, a real s it was an impact on the real sector through again trade, trade declining, government revenue declining, which means expenditures decline. Therefore, then you have really a real uh, uh, a compression uh, of the real sector. What I meant by the third round effect is that it was a situation where in countries, even countries where the banking sector had been solid, wha was not the original uh, the initiator of the, of the crisis, banks having been exposed to sectors which were hit by the crisis. So for example, the commodity trade, oil prices de uh, declining, reduced profitability in the, in, for, for companies uh, that operate in that sector, which made, them, uh, which made it difficult for those company to pay, uh, companies to pay back the, their loans. So the banks that had lent to these particular uh, companies in these particular sectors experienced high defaults. We, we in, in the case of Nigeria, we saw uh, situ situations where banks had to be bailed out by, by, the, by the central bank because of the weakening of their bottom line. So that was the, the third round effect. Of course, of course, this is going to reinforce the second round effect as banks weaken, they are, they are less able to, to lend. Now, the question is, where, uh, how do we see the prospects in the, in the, me in the medium term? Uh, for the U.S., for, the, for Europe, and for developing countries. In the U.S., we are faced with a, a situation where unemployment is still high and is stubbornly high, it's not declining enough, which means that there are many people who are still out of, of, of work. There are even people who have had to, 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 pay, to take uh, jobs that, are, that pay less. So uh, demand is going to, to, to remain uh, below the pre-crisis level, and that's, that's going to hold down um, uh, growth. But uh, uh, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the rest of the, the world, in Europe, we are faced now with uh, uh, countries struggling with their, with their sovereign debt. We have heard about the case of, of Greece. Other European countries are trying to do the best to, to, keep, it, um, fro to, uh, to keep it afloat. Uh, because of the understanding of the severe impact that defaulting uh, uh, collapse of uh, the Greek economy would have on the euro and the, and the, and the other economies. But we expect that uh, the growth in, in the European uh, zone is going to remain very low. Now, this means that as growth remains low in the U.S., remains low in, 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 the, U in the eurozone, that means that uh, this is going to drag growth in the developing countries and the, and the um, emerging economies. Growth, we expect, is going to be su supported. The world growth is going to count a lot on performance uh, of the new emerging uh, powerhouses like China, India, uh, Brazil, uh, which are going to, which have demonstrated much more resilience uh, to the crisis. And talking of resilience, we have seen that, in fact, developing countries and emerging economies were more resilient than, uh, than developed uh, countries. Uh, for example, <coughs> in the case of African countries, although the growth rate was, was reduced severely from an average of uh, uh, five, uh, just, below, just under 6%, to just uh, three, uh, two, uh, uh, two percent in, during the during the recession, we still uh, can say that the, uh, many countries in, in the continent avoided the re a recession, which you observed in in developed developed countries. So the question is, 
who is going to pull growth in the next uh, few years? If it's not the US, if it's not Europe. Uh, once again, emerging economies, China, India, Korea, but also developing countries. But the question is, is this sustainable? The answer is not sure, because uh, there is no way uh, the emerging economies and developing countries can substitute the large demand from Europe and, and the US. So the future growth hinge, hinges very much on, on, on recovery in the US and in Europe. So in the, rest, in the rest of this course, we'll spend a lot of time discussing um, the behavior of key variables in, in macroeconomics that uh, uh, occupy our attention, uh, the, the main one being national output, uh, measured by GDP or GNP. Um, and this uh, will do, uh, we'll look at how GDP is determined in the short run what, what determines uh, variations of GDP in the short run and what determines uh, the trend of GDP in the long run when we do the growth analysis. We'll talk about employment and unemployment and you may wonder why you care about unemployment and employment. We care about employment because it's basically the determinant of the well-being of households and indivi individuals. The higher the, un the, the unemployment, the lower the well-being of, uh, of households. We'll talk about inflation Inflation is, a, is, a, is an indicator of people's wealth. The higher the inflation, the lower the real value of assets and income. And that's why public uh, uh, policymakers pay attention to, to inflation. But of course, we'll talk about what are the, the trade-offs, what are the costs of keeping inflation too low uh, uh, in terms of uh, growth and income, uh, rising income. Uh, we'll also talk about other, other indicators like the current account deficit when we talk about trade, but also fiscal policy, um, uh, fiscal deficit when we talk about uh, fis fiscal policy and the financing of the deficit. This, is, this will be the main focus of our discussion uh, in the next, um, uh, the next few weeks. Thank you. Last time we talked about